Hello, and welcome to the Hexagon Geospatial Demo Studio. Today we're going to take a look at how the new vegetation filter can be used in conjunction with the change detection functionality of Erdus Imagine to help you get to an actionable result quicker. Joining me today in the demo studio is Bhagavat Kumar, who will give us a really quick demo to show how this can be done. Kumar, it's all yours. I'm going to create a new project and add another data set. I have a quick bird data set here. I'm going to add a before image of that. After image. And frame here. And I don't have any parcel file or zone file for this. So I'm going to create auto grid, which comes up with the number of rows and columns I need there. I'm going to just make it like seven by seven and hit OK. And it's just going to go and create zones for uh, grids for me. This could be very useful for defense application where they want to process or look at area, look at different grids one by one and mark them. This has no change or this has changed for the purpose of surveillance. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to demonstrate here is the fact that we have added a new tab called filter tab. This filter tab has a vegetation filter and a shadow sensitivity. In 2015, the shadow sensitivity was part of these parameters, but we now have treating this as a filter because if you want to eliminate shadow, we just use it as a mask. We hide all the parse pixels that we are considered as shadow and then only process the ones that are not included in that, uh, that, that are not masked out. The same way we have added something called a vegetation filter. So if I want to only eliminate veg only changes, and what that means is if on both images, the changes happen to be in an area of where it is vegetation on both sides, we will hide those area. And you would not see any changes that are in change in vegetation. So if a tree was cut down or, or the, the yard was mowed, those changes would be eliminated. So in order to do that, we are using behind the scenes a metric called, uh, I mean, the index in indices called NDVI, which most everybody knows. So for that, you need to specify the sensor of this image, which happens to be QuickBird in this case. I'm going to crank the sensitivity up to 0.5 and let everything else be default and hit run on that. So once we did this analysis it, and I loaded the results, now let's go and look at it. These are all changes that were then went, see vegetation, not a vegetation here, so this was included. But what's interesting if you come bottom down here is that this was all vegetation changes. This was all just vegetation level changes. These are no longer now part of the game. So it took them all out from the equation. And if you are somebody who doesn't care about level, vegetation level changes, this, this reduces the amount of parcels that you need to evaluate. All you do is select them all and mark them as review, edit the region and say selected as unchanged. So that's the same thing applies on here. If I create a new region, I can show. You can also do a, let me create a new region. People have always asked me how I want to create another zone region. You just do any key, primary key here greater than zero, hit enter, and it leads to creating a zone, an empty project again. And if you go here on filter, you can do not a vegetation only change, which would mean the reverse of it. If the changes were only in buildings and not uh, non-vegetation areas, it will exclude that and only take into account if vegetation has been modified. Thanks, Kumar. That was a really quick demo as you promised. Let's recap what you showed us today. Through the use of the new filter exposed in Imagine 2016, you can selectively eliminate vegetation from the change detection process. In the example you showed, it would allow you to quickly eliminate zones where only the vegetation had changed and you were only interested in evaluating building or construction changes. I like the example you gave on how this could greatly accelerate the time for image analysts in a defense organization to go through their assigned zones. 
And in closing, you showed how this could work in the inverse circumstance, where you are only interested in vegetation change, such as a utility company would be when they're evaluating vegetation growth in relation to power line encroachment. That concludes the demonstration on using the new vegetation filter with change detection. Thanks for your time, and have a great day.